Productions presents Laugh, Literature and Film. Broadcasting live from Flying Bull Production Studios, it's Laugh, episode 114, a wee laugh for the January 22nd weekend. I'm your host, Mr. Two Frames. Joining me in studios is my co-host, the L-Train. How are you, sir? I'm good. On this frozen tundra of a winter day in yeah. balmy southern Virginia. <laughs> it was 60 degrees yesterday. Yeah, and now we're right at freezing and there's two inches of snow out there, inch and a half. It's a slushy, snowy mess. Yeah. And because this is Virginia, snow on Sunday could possibly mean no school for us on Tuesday. And Wednesday. (laughs) And Wednesday, wow. (laughs) Probably, probably true, which is why we are taking the time to get this episode out a little early. The We Laugh podcast rolls on. Mm -hmm. Neither rain nor snow nor dark of night keep Mm -hmm. us from our appointed podcasting. Yeah, with three uh, movies coming out this weekend. Any of these got you excited? Nope. Can't say that they do. All right, well, then let's jump right into them <laughs> on that note. Uh, coming out is The Fifth Wave, starring Chloe Grace Moretz. This is based on the book of the same title, another one of those teen dystopian novels, part of a trilogy. In this one, four waves of increasingly uh, deadly alien attacks have left most of Earth decimated. Casey is on the run, desperately trying to save her younger brother. Hmm. Apparently, Chloe Grace Moretz is a huge fan of this book, and she's so excited that she gets to play this character. I like Moretz. Mm-hmm. She may be getting a little long in the tooth for this sort of thing, though. Yeah, she's not so much teenager. She grew up quick, because, I mean, Hit Girl, she was tiny and seemed so young in the last three, four years. What happens with her? She's Did, blossomed. Does she go trashy now? I hope not. I hope she goes more of the Jennifer Lawrence vein than the Miley Cyrus. Mm, Jen, even Jen Lo- even. J Law is going a little trashy. She's hanging out with some trashy people. Ah, oh, that's sad. There's the Miley Cyrus route mm-hmm. of selfies and late night debauchery, and then there's the Natalie Portman route. Go of, to Harvard. Yeah, Ivy League schools and and service to others. And she's at that threshold. She's at that. Uh, she's at that crossroads. She's always been a popular actress, I feel, but she hasn't had a whole lot of hit films. And I'm not sure this is going to be a hit film. This scene, hit girl. Yeah, I mean, to me, this film is trying to be the Maze Runner. It's not even going for Hunger Games. Right. It's hoping to hit second tier. <laughs> it's a second tier and teen it, dystopian love story. Yeah, it could whiff and be third tier. It could be down there with The Giver. Well, so you got, it's it's called Game Theory. Mm-hmm. You got Ender's Game and Hunger Games. <laughs> and she's going to be, she's going for Ender's, Ender's Game. Or she want to be over here on Hunger Games because it's got to be, it's got to be one of these recurring sort of oh, yeah. trilogies or it's something. It's part right? of a trilogy. I mean, so they're hoping this does well, makes <sighs> at least $100 million, hopefully way more than that. It's got Liev Schreiber in it. I like that guy. I do, too. Um, I'm a little worried the director, Jay Blakeson, he only has one other directorial feature. The 2009, The Disappearance of Alice Creed. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I didn't either. I feel like it was one of those. There's a reason. Direct to blockbuster back in the blockbuster days. If, if there's a if there's a movie you've never heard of, there's a reason you've never heard of that movie. Yeah. So, does he just go by that one letter? Yeah. J. J. Blakeson. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that either. <laughs> I mean, if your name is also a name like J and a letter, then I get it. Then you can be J. Because it doesn't matter either way. But the, yeah, the, it was he like he's trying to be like a Nick G, uh, right? The guy who directed the Charlie's Angels films. Oh, I, I was thinking like a a character in a Bond film. I don't know. I'm not too excited about right. this. I wish it luck. It Good luck. May, it may find an audience since there's not a whole lot out in theaters, but I don't know. All right, so if you don't want to see that, like me and Mister uh, Two Frames over there, you could go see the boy. Mm-hmm. The the boy is about a young American woman who takes a job as a nanny. Do they call them au pairs if they're going to from America? No, I think it has to be the other direction. To her surprise, Greta learns that the child of uh, this family is a doll, a life-size doll. And the parents of this doll care for it as if it's a, a human being. Which uh, helps the couple uh, cope with the death of the child. Mm-hmm. He died 20 years ago. 
Yeah, and there's this doll, and <laughs> there are a bunch of strict rules. Like you can't As cover in up all the doll. horror movies. Yeah. All right. So, what do you think? <laughs> it's coming out. The boy, uh, PG thirteen, right? I, I think it could be kind of good in the vein of a child's play. You know, those Chucky films. Mm-hmm. You could have a lot of jump scares. There's something intrinsically scary about dolls. I think it's that you know, uncanny valley. They almost look human. Mm-hmm. Those eyes are kind of soulless, though, so it's easy to uh, project evil into a doll. Hmm. You know, and believe that. Uh, I like Laura Cohen, the star of this. She played Maggie Green on The Walking Dead. It's okay. also got Rupert Evans in there. I like that guy, too. Uh, it's directed by William Brent Bell, who this guy, unlike our last director, has two first names. <laughs> and he goes with, uh, uh, he he wrote, he directed The Devil Inside. I think I've heard of that movie. Yeah, an Never exorcist film. And, or exorcism. And Where, which is about, a, I think, a werewolf. Mm-hmm. werewolf lawyer I, I think this is going to steal the audience away from teens that would go see the fifth wave i can see them wanting to see this horror movie more i've never heard of the fifth wave and i've never heard of the boy <laughs> like but uh, you think that if kids were excited about something it would be the next new teen dystopian thing but they tend to go to PG-13 horror movies? Yeah, I, don't know. I, I think this one can have them. Now then, people need to be uh, careful that they don't go and watch The Boy, the 2015 version. That's a very different film. It's still a horror film, but it's called The Boy. And, you know, if you're like, oh, look, we can just watch The Boy on Amazon Prime. Hmm. That could be a mistake. Okay. Um, that one that is about a kid who's at uh, uh, Southwest America, this horrible rundown motel and he has a fascination with a roadkill that sounds actually evil. more interesting it was it was pretty good i enjoyed it hmm. maybe we'll maybe it'll make the top 10 list that we're going to start given next episode right wow oh. so we will see but I, I think the boy steals the audience from the fifth wave i think older kids and even like college students are going to be going to see dirty grandpa starring zach efron and robert de niro this is uh about a guy, Zach Efron, who has to go take his grandpa to Florida. Road for trip. spring break. Yeah. Some weird convoluted reason, yeah. Yeah. Um the director is Dan Mazer. He was a producer of Borat, Bruno, and the Dictator. He likes that Sasha Barra Cohen guy. Yeah. Is is uh Sasha Barra Cohen in this? I don't believe so. Baron Cohen. Baron Cohen. Um script has apparently been floating around Hollywood for quite a while. It was on the 2011 blacklist, uh, that list of films mm-hmm. that you know everyone says this is great, but probably will never get made. It just went up in my estimation. They were trying to get a bunch of different actors to play the dirty grandpa role before Robert De Niro accepted it. They were going after guys like Jeff Bridges and Michael Douglas for mm-hmm. the role, and they got turned down for a variety of reasons. De Niro, I think, at this point in his career, doesn't really care. Oh, he was hilarious in Joy. He was the best part of Joy for uh, about 15 minutes. And, and then it, it sort of trickled away. But th- that's because of the script, not because of him. If he plays that character of Joy, that he played in Joy, in this movie, Bad Dirty Grandpa or whatever it is. Dirty Grandpa. Could be, uh, could be worth seeing. Yeah, I think you could have some fun. R-rated. The I screenwriter mean... is writing uh, Bad Santa 2. Ooh, I'm excited. John Phillips. I love some Bad Santa. This is his first movie, though. I don't know. The last road picture I saw, Tammy, I, I didn't think that was that bad. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, it's a genre, <laughs> you know. And it, it, it might work. Of all of these, that's the one I might see. But I probably won't see anything. I would probably go see The Boy if I had my choice. Really? Between these three, yeah. When was the last PG-13 horror movie you went to in the movie theater? The Gift? Or the the visit, the visit, yeah, that we did on the show. But that was that. That's it. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. Well, have fun. <laughs> you won't be seeing it with me. All right. Instead, what I could do instead of going to the movies, uh, I could go by the good old Redbox and rent The Condemned Two, starring Randy Orton, he of the wrestling fame. Oh, there you go. Sadly, out with a shoulder injury, and he's probably going to miss WrestleMania. Oh, I feel bad about that. Yeah. Well, they're they're afraid he might also have a neck injury. We might not see Randy Orton for all of 2016. The Viper. Huh. But we could see him in The Condemned 2, which is the sequel to The Condemned, which starred Steve Austin. In this one, though, after a failed mission to capture the leader of a deadly gambling ring, bounty hunter Will Tanner becomes the hunted. 
a human target in a game in which contestants must kill or be killed. His high rollers bet on who will survive. Will, his dad, and members of Will's team wage an all-out war against the game's mastermind, hmm. who's apparently played by Eric Roberts. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So. You seen it? Not yet, but I'm excited to go watch it. I kind of like these uh, low-budget action films that the WWE's been putting out. I mean, they're fun. They're entertaining enough. Zip over there, that old red box, and check it out. Now then, what if the weather's bad and I just got to fire up the old streaming device? What could I get? Well, sadly, this week, we lost one of the greats, Alan Rickman. Uh, He was uh, Hans. Hans Gruber. Gruber in Die Hard. That's probably where I first saw him or remember seeing him. He may have been in some other movies. I remember seeing him. But uh, the one that sticks out for me is streaming on Netflix. And it's my net pick of the week. It's uh, Galaxy Quest. It's one of my favorite sci-fis. It's voted the seventh highest Star Trek movie by Star Trek fans. <laughs> uh, it's this, the stars of a 1970s sci-fi show scraping a living through going to conventions are beamed aboard the alien spacecraft who think that the TV show was real, who think that the TV show was real. So they expect that these guys are going to come in and be their saviors. Uh, Very funny film, very self-reflective, and it sort of skewers that Star Trek culture, that Trekkie culture, but it does it in a lighthearted way. It's got Sigourney Weaver in it, Tim Allen, I think, is the lead star. Plays Jason Nesmith. But Alan Rickman is uh, Sir Alexander Dane. And he plays sort of a Spock character, an alien on board, trying to, uh, I don't know, behave like this character. While he's really a human being, an actor, they go into space and they have to affect these certain uh, mannerisms from the old show. Written in, uh, sorry, directed by Dean Parasot. And the story by David Howard. This movie actually has some interesting elements to it. it uh, in the movie theater, the when they, the original projection, the film's aspect ratio changed from 1, 8, 1. 1.85 to 1 to a 2.35 when they got into the uh, spaceship lands on Thermia. So they, they had that sort of effect on it. On the screen, it's one of the first films to have its own website for marketing came out in 1999 i think or 2000 christmas 1999 uh justin long's first film and uh rain wilson's first movie so yeah no i, I definitely i liked it i think there's even some plans to try and do a tv show of galaxy quest yeah there was that and there was uh they were thinking about a sequel i don't know where that's going to be with alan rickman passing or where that's going to go with Alan Rickman's passing. But uh, if you want to spend a little time with that actor and you've already seen Die Hard and you haven't seen Galaxy Quest, or if you have seen Galaxy Quest, you should check it out. It's my net pick of the week. I like it. That's a good hidden gem pick. So uh, if you're staying home, you can go by the Red Bots, pick up The Condemned 2, go to Netflix, you can watch Galaxy Quest starring the late great Alan Rickman. If you're going to theaters, you have three options to choose from. The Fifth Wave, The Boy, and Dirty Grandpa. That's laugh number 114. On laugh 115, we're going to be giving you our uh, pick 6 through 10, the best films of 2015. All right, we've finally had a chance to see all the films I think we wanted to see or all the films that we had available to us to see in our movie theaters. Uh, sometimes we had to go up we had to go great distances to see some movies, but we're counting down our uh, top ten now, the next couple of shows. So we'll give you the first half of our list on uh, episode 115. Thank you for joining me, l Thank you, sir. There be dragons. Hawks have bone. some of the ones uh uh your guy from my guy i have an old guy actor that i like because i know true grit i know tony c is big in, into uh robert de niro yeah but who's from true grit I, you're the one with a brain freeze not me <laughs> apparently <laughs> thanks I, for helping me i out. am too i can't remember i, I, I don't know he, uh, he was in the big lebowski <laughs>
Am I going to have to work on this? Do I have to cut this out? Yeah, this is pretty bad. <laughs> it's horrible. I almost wore that shirt today. My Not big Jeff Lebowski Daniels, shirt. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Bridges. <laughs> Craig Daniels. Craig Daniels. Daniel Craig. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Apparently, there were a lot of actors that they were trying to get to take the role of uh, Bad Grandpa before Robert De Niro did it. Uh, they wanted people like... Uh, <laughs> Jeff, not J- Jeff Bridges. There we go. And uh, this is why I need to start writing stuff down. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Jeff Bridges. And I had the, the other The outtakes one. are going to be longer than the show. Jeff Bridges and... Uh, oh, what's his name? Is there another Michael guy? Michael Douglas. There Holy crap. I had to go the long way for that one. I was like, his dad was in Spartacus. What was that guy's name? Kirk Douglas. Wow. Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> 